Hey guys, Clyde here live from Leechburg Lights Workshop. We're, we're doing some stuff on the computer here and uh, I had a question that I received through um, through uh, my Gmail account from Philip and I apologize for the late delay in getting back to you, uh, Philip, but uh, there's a lot of questions that I do receive and this is a, this is a very common one and I want to go through the steps. Uh, it seems Philip's been uh, working with Lightarama for uh, about 10 years now. That's more than I've been using Lightarama. And uh, he wants to get started. He's using 144 channels, which is significant. Um, and that's a lot of work. Uh, I know that in in my old days with just uh, with the Lightarama um, program, with a if you if I go into some of my old ones, here's an old here's an old sequence from 2011. Uh, I had probably almost mm -hmm. 250. Uh, channels here and you can see you can see I had quite a large uh, setup if I opened all these up I had all kinds of groups and stuff but uh, there's over you know 300 channels in, in my Lightarama my original set setup and uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that that's gone um, but I've traded up to the RGBs and how do you get them into Lightarama? That's a very good question and that's what we're going to go take care of right now. So without any further ado, we're going to do two things. We're going to go into the edit menu and click on preferences and we're going to select network preferences. Now, whenever, if you've never opened this program or uh, this, this network preferences before, you might see a screen that looks like this. Um, this shows you, the LOR tab shows you what uh, the LOR RS-485 dongle COM port is. And it, right now uh, on this computer it would output on COM port number 5 and it, it selects its speed, the best speed possible for it. Uh, if you go into DMX, uh, I, have some, I have some information here. It says more additional universes. I never use this screen. This is the simple screen. Um, I like the advanced screen better. So I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to bring up this specific uh, uh, network uh, screen. And in this DMX universes, um, I'm going to click on one of the universes I haven't set up yet, and that's universe 11. We're going to go and to set up E131, this is all you do. Are you ready? Just put the radio, select the radio box beside E131, and that's it. Click on multicast, and this will make it a lot easier for your setup. If you have a small setup, recommend uh, multicast. Although last year I have a large setup for for my display, I use multicast for absolutely everything in the display. So it was quite easy to get it running, and I'm I'm gonna guess I had somewhere around you know 9,000 or 10,000 channels. So click OK, and once you click OK, you're gonna click Apply. When you do, you're going to be prompted to uh, restart your, your all of your LOR items in your LOR suite before the advanced settings take effect. So when you click OK, you would close out of this, you would save your work, you would close out of all of this, and whenever you bring the program back up, then those settings will obviously be ready for uh, use. But the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go into Edit and Preferences, and you're going to go to DMX Preferences and you're going to make sure that this little checkbox right here says allow DMX setting is checked. If it's not, make sure you put a check mark there. Those are the two major things that you need to have done whenever you start working with RGBs and uh, DMX for Lightarama. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new sequence and I'm just going to use animation as the uh, uh, as the option. We'll uh, leave this as all the defaults and here we've created it. We'll open this up and I'll make this bigger so you can see the channel numbers. Uh, now we're going to insert our RGB channels. And the way we do this is we insert a device and I simply right click 
and I insert device, insert device below, and select. Uh, I do a lot of DMX work, so it's auto, auto defaults to DMX universe. You may see LOR 16 channel as your default. So you want to just change your device to DMX universe. And you can change the name if you want to, but uh, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And I always leave the ad as a group because it's a nice feature and it makes it easier to read the whole screen. So which universe are you using? You're using universe number one. Uh, you can, if you're going up to, like I'm up to 42, universe 42 for this year, I think, uh, and I still have a couple more things to set up. So just select your universe that you need and then we're going to scroll down here and each DMX universe has 512 channels uh, for which you can assign uh, props and so forth too. Now that we have this added, we come down here and we're going to right click on the first DMX channel. We've expanded the group and we're going to right click and we're going to convert to RGB channel. Now I'm not going to rename anything. I'm going to uh, the first three, the red, green, and the blue, that would be the first three, channel one through two, three. I'm going to, to continue this process through the rest of the universe. And how I'll do that is I'll select this box that says follow this through the following channels. And we're going to do 170. That's the maximum number of RGB channels you can have in one universe. Click OK. And I'm just going to page down. And at the bottom, we see we have two open universes or two open channels left. I go ahead and delete these because there's no reason to have them. You'll never use these last two channels for any reason whatsoever. If you need more DMX channels, you just follow the, you just repeat the exact same process. You right click, you insert device, insert device below, change this to Universe Two. Make sure that you have DMX Universe selected, of course. Come down here, you can create another. 512 channels of DMX. Bam. Now you have to convert these as well. If you're adding a lot of pixels uh, and a lot of DMX channels to your universe, you might want to see John Storm's video on using Bob's Vegematic program in order to create your, uh, uh, your massive channel count for your display if you're using a large channel count. If you're just starting with LOR, this is all, or not with LOR, but with DMX and RGB channels, and you only need to add two or three, I highly recommend just doing it this way. Insert device, insert device below. You can do more. You can add as many as you want, but we're going to convert these RGB channels. Do this for 170 channels. Click OK. Notice it hangs up a little bit more, and this is the reason why you use Bob's Vegematic if you're doing a large setup. Okay, so now we're going to go in and we're going to rename some of these channels so it makes a little more sense, makes it look a little more LOR-like. And we're going to change this to Window. And we'll call it Window 1. Click OK. See how it changed the, uh, the, the label to Window. We'll click on here. We'll do Window 2. And click Enter. We'll do window three. And we'll do, now we'll, we'll do something a little different. We'll do, we'll do tree number one. Tree number two. And we'll do tree number three. So now we have three channels, or six, actually not three channels, we have three, uh, six different props. We have window one, window two, window three, tree number one, tree number two, and tree number three. Once again, this is for dumb RGB. This is not meant as a pixel element. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up the visualizer. Let's not add an animation or a, a, a screen behind it there, a picture behind it. And let's just set up our rows as 60 and 60. I'm going to zoom in here because it's a little easier to draw whenever these are bigger. And we're going to go to um, down here to the to the uh, to the unit tab here and we see that 
we have DMX1, this is the DMX1 universe, and we have window 1, window 2, and window 3. Now notice how the subcategories, the R, G, and B, all have window 1 beside them. That's the grouping for window number 1. We're just going to select the window number 1, and we're going to make, I don't know, just click and drag. There's window number 1. Let's fix that. And to delete, I love Excel, you can just, or uh, Excel, I love LOR for the fact that you can just build a model and use the right click button, as you can see, to erase it. Go to window number 2, not grabbing the R, G, or B. And I'm just doing this really, really quick so that you guys can see it. Let's go back here and scroll down to number 3. Wow, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, lordy. Okay, so let's delete that. I swear I have not drank anything other than water and coffee this morning. Maybe that's why. Too much coffee. So let's go build the tree. Now, I have tweet trees on my display. And what I did was I just, I just used a basic shape of... Uh, a, a line and then I drew some cross uh, uh, cross lines and I think that's enough um, that's tree number one go down to tree number two <laughs> there we go. And tree number three. There we go. So we've got three different models in here now. And uh, this is how you get your, um, your uh, models into LOR. And let's click on View, and there we go. We can make this a little smaller. And nothing fancy, just, just some models in, uh, in, into, uh, into Lightorama. Very, very, very easy to do this. Then from here, we'll go ahead and close out of here. So there's the gist about how to get your DMX channels into Lightorama. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a little bit of uh, network setup, and I'll try to talk you through how to connect, um, how to connect up to the network. Uh, let's go into Control Panel, and this is Windows 7. It's about the same in Windows 8. I just, I just. Uh, Always, I'll hit the Windows key in Windows 8, and I'll type uh, Control Panel, and it'll bring this up. Uh, then I'll go into Network, Network and Sharing, and Change Adapter Settings. Then what it, what it's finding is my adapter for this computer for the Ethernet port. I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to go into Properties. You need to go from here into TCP/IP and double click on your TCP/IP version 4. And on this Internet Protocol version 4, you need to select the radio box here that says use the following IP address. And you need to assign your computer an IP address. I highly recommend a separate computer for Lightorama if you're using a DMX universe. It's just a little bit easier. Uh, whenever you do run Lightorama with DMX, there's this the, uh, Lightorama, the program, actually has this thing called a listener. And this listener is how it outputs the data from E131 to your uh, E131 based bridge or uh, network device. So that's how the bridge knows, or that's how E131 knows what universe and what channel to turn on. This network setup is a paramount. It's most important to have this set up. So what I did was I set my computer up to 192.168.1.3 whenever you click on this it will automatically fill in the subnet mask which is 255.255.255.0 .255 .255 
and then you come down here and you'll have to fill in the DNS server I just use the exact same IP address as up here I'm sure that's not right but it it works for the setup I'm not doing any heavy networking with multiple computers throughout my uh, throughout my uh, computer network in the house um, once that's done you click OK you click OK and you click close and your network adapter is now set up to send out or receive data over the 192.168 uh, network you just set up. Now I'll bring up this picture here and I'll, I'll have to slide it down. You've, you've done the work, let me close this out, you've done the work in Lightarama to set up your channels and uh, for example one of the things that you're gonna uh, do is you're gonna set up uh, this bridge to receive which is very simple uh, receive multicast uh, 192168 that's the the uh, network setting that we just set up on there and using this listener here this listener is what's going to send the data out to your E131 uh, device and since this is an E131 device this can receive the data for universe 1 and it will go ahead and talk to the controller using the network cable which would then be I'll make this a little smaller um, like I said this is hard to explain unless I show a video of of the individual setups the data comes from the, the listener into this bridge and your output goes from here out to your controller and input into there so this is the exact same controller that I use for my windows upstairs on the roof line and those windows let me uh, those windows here's the windows the controller sits up on the roof it actually is uh, there's a controller right there you can't see it but it runs all the windows on the roof it runs the, the wreath and the star up on the on the peak and it is connected to this bridge here through universe one through this output to universe one and it goes out to the controller so that's the basic setup of how I get the um, the RGB's to work through in, uh, through uh, Lightarama and that's the basic setup guys I, I hope this is helpful it is kind of jittery to explain everything step by step just using the computer screen but uh, if you have any questions feel free to fill them in below in the comments thanks a lot have a good one